welcome back, folks. Mac D Live. And I am here today in the hotel again. Normal part of my day in my life. But uh, I want to thank everybody that's joined here on the group today. And uh, remember, MacTGarage.com. Yes, go there. Find all the different parts and information on your generation of Edge. It is all broken down for you. A lot of easy clickable links. Then go to the social page to buy the t-shirts and everything else. And also for the members to register themselves on the map. Yes, it'll take a few minutes after you register and might even take up to a day. So don't get excited if you don't see yourself on it right away. But rest assured, it will be updated almost on a daily basis. But uh, Mac T Garage, folks, don't miss it. MacTGarage.com. Join up on there and check out what we've done the hard work for in finding parts for your edge. And we will be updating that as we just recently did with additional new parts and some modifications and things like that. So, uh, Join up on there and check it out. Bookmark that page so you have it ready access. Uh, Mac T Ford Edge Facebook group growing rapidly. Yes, we are definitely going to be one of the bigger groups here very shortly. So uh, it's it's going quite a ways. We tossing in new members all the time, and I just did a welcome to all the new members there. So. Uh, if you want to join, remember we only have one rule, and that is everything that you learned in kindergarten applies to the group. Pretty simple rule. We all know what they are, so go from there. And with that being said, we are going to start getting everybody gathered up here. I'm going to check Facebook out here and see how many folks we have on the group so far. I'm thinking I'm on here anyway. There we go. Let me get myself set up, expand it out so I can see the questions as they're going in there and uh, check everybody out that is on here that uh, is joined up so far. We got several that have already joined up and I can see Steven is alive and well. I thought maybe he disappeared and was kidnapped by polar bears, but apparently it's not true. <laughs> so anyway, let's see what else do we got here. We got all sorts of folks jumping in here. Got uh, Joe, he's out there in Rochester, New York, and he jumped in here. And then Kevin from Florida, and then Stephen from Canada. Yes, Canada. And we're just starting to get things going and having a great time. Uh, we'll cover also the new t-shirts that you can get. We have redesigned the t-shirts. Now we have two designs available. The original of course is still up and going but we have the new design featuring the 1.5 generation uh, edge on the front and then all sorts of neat stuff on the back and then on the sleeves and you can get them in multiple colors and uh, multiple choices I guess for printing color so you can make a lot of combinations 30 times three or four different colors you end up with hundreds of different selections that you can pick from so uh, that will help and coming very soon once we get it going you will be able to pick what apparel choice you want it won't be just a t-shirt if you feel like you want yoga pants with mac t on the behind i guess that's what you're gonna get but <laughs> i don't even want to vision that uh anyway uh you can get you know sweatshirt whatever you will pay for whatever special uh, apparel that is and they will give you the help that you need to make sure you get the right choice right colors and Amanda at AK uh, PC printing will help you do that and get you set up perfectly so uh, they they don't miss a beat there Amanda's fantastic and everybody loves her because she's so sweet to help them out so uh, by all means definitely send your business that way 
uh, and help the help the channel out here, YouTube and everything else, because I do apply the money I get back into trying to make better products and, and other things to help out the, the YouTube channel equipment and all this stuff. So it does go back into all that, and that's what I really stride to do. So enough on the business side and everything else. Uh, we got a few folks here watching. I guess I can answer any questions. We'll get into the nitty gritty of what I actually said. Uh, you know, what oil additives have I put in my engines? Hmm. How do I get them to so many miles? And what is my secret additive? Yes. You guys probably want to know that. So uh, we'll go and jump into that here in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mike, I'm not sure if Mac T will fit on that type of undergarment. I, I'm afraid there's probably not enough material. <laughs> I'm just just saying. Uh, I'm not so sure. I, oh, I want the logo there. Uh, anyway. <laughs> If they're willing to print it on it, I guess you can. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm sure it's a sense of humor somewhere. But anyway, let's see. What else we got? Yes, yes, Kevin, Amanda is a rock star, and we appreciate everything she does. She, she runs that business, and she manages to juggle little ones all at the same time. So I give her credit for that. Holy cow. But uh, anyway... A uh, very good lady to work with, and uh, she'll help you out. Let's see. We got Mike. He's from Elgin, Illinois. He's joined up here and having a great time. And let's see. What else? Who else we got up here? Okay. Well, I guess Steven's going to have some yoga pants he's going to get printed up here for us. Uh, not so sure I want to see that either. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it is all in fun. Um, had a, you know, I've had a busy week. I'm uh, getting on the road and uh, hit a snowstorm. Holy cow, when will spring get here? I saw a picture of a tractor with a planter on it and it was sitting in the snow. You can't plant in the snow. Holy cow. So out here in the rural Iowa, you know, you got to get things going out there and, and get things moving. So, uh, yeah, that that was uh, quite a deal. Yes. So it all melded today primarily. Tomorrow will definitely be gone, and we will be into spring because we're like in the 70s here. So uh, hopefully that was the last blast, but now we got tornadoes coming at us. So uh you know never ends always something going on there so we want to check and make sure that we keep things moving if nothing else uh anybody doing stuff i've had a lot of questions and i seen that my uh private message uh, board tends to blow up uh folks uh i don't i work during the day <laughs> i don't know what to tell you and i can't spend all night doing it because i put in a lot of hours I try to answer questions, so if you think it's taking me a long time, it probably is. Uh, you know, I got to weigh in family and everything else, so uh, I get at you when I can get at you. If you need something more immediate, uh, the Facebook group, get on there and post it, and that's pretty my, much my focus. Uh, private messages, you know, I, I can't go between everything, uh, just the way it is. There's only so much time in the day, so... I, I try to focus and, and funnel everything to the group to ask. You know, group thinks good because there's a lot of good folks there that have great information. It's not just me. Uh, you know, they specialize in electronics, uh, audio. Uh, you know, some things I'm very weak in on that. Audio is one of them. I, to me, it's a miracle the radio button works. But... <laughs> Maybe not that bad, but uh, <laughs> it's just not something I get into. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of good folks on there, and you know, and I like learning from them too. So I expand my knowledge base on that. There's always room and time to learn, and we want to make sure that we can do that. And that is what we do best. Okay, Jan says I thought it was on Friday. Sorry, Jan. I'm trying to recoup my Fridays. I'm trying to get things done during the week. Uh, you know, I had things going on weekends, and 
it was taking too much time away from family, folks. It really was. It was becoming a problem. So, uh, you know, I've redid everything so that I can get my weekend back, uh, spend more time with my girls because, you know what, they're not going to be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, forever. So, uh, you know, want to make sure I make that first. And you guys are definitely up in there, but, uh, you know, family. You, and you, you all need to do family things too okay that's that's really the point behind it so importance of family that's all we want to work for and uh, that's all we work for right yes it's always good um, let's see what else we got going on ahead you know a lot of different things uh, going on in the group uh, we have what three four engine uh, pullouts and teardowns for uh, water pumps holy cow uh, you know, there, there's a fine line in there, you know, what you're doing, uh, you know, because if you look at it, if you do a lot of parts changing, you're going to start getting, um, gosh, up into the, you know, five, six hundred dollar category uh, for parts. And where does it stop? And then eventually you go, well, gee, if I'm going to put eight hundred bucks into the engine and it's got like mine, you know, say two hundred fifty thousand miles on it. You know, you got to flip a coin. What am I going to do? Just toss another 30, 40, 50,000 mile engine in it and for 750 bucks? Or spend 500, $600 on an engine that's got a high mileage on it. So, you know, you got to weigh in the cost benefits of what you're actually going to do. And then there may be a time where I look at Lou and say, hmm, uh, yeah, time to retire, the old gal. So, uh, just depends what happens to it so uh, saw my last oil port oil report yes uh, let's see you got Noel uh, he's in there from Saskatchewan Canada so I think I said that right Saskatchewan I hope I did <laughs> I can't pronounce all these names but uh, let's see um, yeah the you know the whole thing as far as the engine I don't know what to say I lost track of my train of thought here uh, but you know working on the cars and everything else 250,000 retire Lou what I do um, I don't know it's she's got a lot of miles on her and time I get to 300,000 we'll see we'll see where she ends up but the oil report that's where I was going uh, did 200 and you know forget how many thousand miles on it this last oil report that I just did was the uh, Kendall GT1 uh, liquid titanium oil and uh, got the oil report back and yet and that's posted up I think it's even in the oil report section on Mac T garage so you can look it up for the lattice latest one and I think it has the last four oil changes on there so you can compare what the oils were doing in lieu and also you know I don't know you guys eat your heart out but holy cow no cooling in the oil right and it, look at it that thing's running no fuel in the oil and all engine wears were below universal okay so you know that tells you that Duratec's pretty tough and uh, just depends what you got in the oil right so, uh, you know, that's, that's where it's at, and uh, I by no means am easy on my oil. Uh, if you did look at the oil report, I did manage to get a TBN done on it, and that came in, I think, at about a 1.4. And that 1 is as low as you want to go. So I ran, uh, well, you know, a little over 200 hours on it, and... If you want to know how many miles that is, it was like 10,700 or 11,000 miles that I ran that oil. So I'd ran that oil to getting close to the exhaustive phase uh, of the oil. Although they did say I could probably go another, you know, 25 hours or so. Uh, but it did make it. And uh, so the, I'm going to give the candle a thumbs up as far as durability. Uh, the flash point stayed above, uh, no fuel and oil helps, uh, but uh, TBN was still reading good, uh, and that just tells me that the oil's good. So, um, Kendall GT1, good, you know, good, good enough oil, 
that made it there. And if you notice, all my oil changes go 200 hours more or less. So uh, that adds into it all together. How many of you start, you know, having bricks when you get past 3,000 miles? You know, it just depends on your driving. And that's all I can say. Uh, my wife, I only go 100 hours with hers because she idles it her edge to death and uh, that thing's always got fuel in it so high idle more fuel in the fuel, uh, oil ends up lower lifespan so that's how that works uh, let's see we got about six of you on here what are y'all saying now uh, Steven sent me some specs on the uh, pure later boss uh, oil filter so thank you Steven uh, I guess it was 99% uh, at 40 micron, um, and it, there's plus and minuses because uh, some other oil filters were saying they're 97 or something like that at uh, you know 10 micron or 20 micron. So it, apparently in the filtration world, uh, you can filter to a certain point at a certain micron. But again, once you get to a certain point, then the filtration stops altogether and it goes through the bypass. So uh, there's give and take on all this. Uh, all I can say is that uh, I had no insolubles in my oil that were even traceable, so it came out to zero. So, you know, the filter's working, the engine's running clean, so that ought to tell you something right there. So. Uh, I'm sticking with the Pure Later Boss uh, one uh, oil filter for really one reason, and that is for oil testing reasons. So this way, if we say, you know, I change my oil, then I change oil filter, then all of a sudden I got higher insolubles or or lower even. Um, not that it can go any lower than zero, but uh, you know, what's the cause and effect? But if I keep the oil filter, then all the oils run through the same oil filter, so everything's equal on that. So that's what I do to uh, measure the used oil is by using the same filter. Uh, you know, are there better ones? Who knows? But uh, everybody's got an opinion on oil filters, just like they got an opinion on oil. I've learned that over this last oil analysis. I tell y'all. Hey, Mobile One's really <laughs> not a good oil, and y'all still use it. So uh, you can choose to listen to me or not. I don't make me. It ain't my engine. So you know, use what you want. You can throw a roll of toilet paper in a canister and and uh, run cooking oil at it. It's, it's not my say so. It's your engine. It's your money, and it's your decision. <laughs> That's where I'm gonna leave it because you know I can't you know say one way or another you know who's doing right or wrong it's just how I do it and I'm just telling you guys how I do it so uh, that leads up to a lot of other things uh, as far as oils and what it, what my uh, additives are okay um, as you all know I got the first Ford Edge which was the Orange Crush. It went to 285,000 miles. Now, I, I admit I abused that Orange Crush. I really did. I, and I've said that before. Um, but I did change the oil. I changed the oil religiously in it. Now, as far as when I was running it, um, changed the oil. And then also the same thing on the uh, Lou. 234,000 miles now uh, changed the oil now as far as additives that I used in it okay to in in both of these uh, engines they're both Duratec 3.5 one was the VCT and then with uh, Lou it's the TI VCT so pretty much the same engine uh, they just added a few refinements to the Duratec over time uh, but you know the additives I ran in there really uh, really helped a lot in uh, keeping uh, both those engines running and I'm sure you guys want to know what the additives are uh, that I did to get to the high mileage that I have with uh, both these engines and uh, I was talking to Mano as you guys all know him in the group and uh, he, he told me what, I, what what additive I was using, 
And uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, the additive that he jokingly said was Norwegian elk hound poo. <laughs> Because uh, <laughs> I got a Norwegian elk hound, and she creates a lot of additive there. But uh, to, uh, I guess, full disclosure, you guys probably really want to know what the additive is that I, I run in there. Engine oil to make sure that it runs for a long time. And I'm going to tell you that you've all seen the additive. Um, you've seen every bit of it. And I'm going to tell you straight up, the true additive is engine oil. Okay? That's it, folks. I only change the oil. I change it on a regular basis. I change it and use every oil there is practically. Um, I have used 21 different brands of oil in lieu. I used at least 10 different brands of oil in the Orange Crush. Multiple different filters. Here's the whole thing. The only additives that I've ever put into my engine oil are the additives from the oil manufacturers. There's no magic additive that you can put in these engines absolutely none anybody who says they have an additive that can help your engine is selling you a snake oil um, changing the oil that's it change the oil change it with a new filter change it on a nice scheduled frequent basis based on the conditions you drive it mine are all highway easy on an engine okay steady rpm constant flow, constant heat, runs good. Best thing you can do to an engine. City driving will destroy an engine. But changing the oil is your best defense. So the additives that come in the oil are the additives you want. They, they, they measure this stuff down to the parts per billion, folks. They are trying to find their, their best foray into it. The anti-wear additives that they put in there are what you really want to pay attention to. That's why I rated uh, several oils off the shelf really good and I will put those videos out here soon and you will see the summaries of the top oils, the top off the shelf oils and the top PTU gear oil. Those will be coming out and, and there's no magic bullet. It, it's changing the oil. Some of us don't do it very well and that's where it comes into a problem is when you don't change the oil uh... you know if you got a garage queen change it on at least a monthly scheduled basis you know go six months and then change it okay uh... irregardless of what you do you want to get the the water out of there the condensation and everything else out of there if it just sits around but if you're like me and drive the thing to death there's not going to be water in the oil unless the water pump blows out on you so uh, that is, is really, you know, what you got to pay attention to. Uh, the oil weights and viscosities, I will say that uh, I did change the viscosity on Lou, or not on Lou, but on the Orange Crush towards the end, about the last 30,000 miles, because uh, the uh, first gen Duratec was having an issue. Yes, and it will happen to all engines. It's called the rear main seal. Yes. Uh, the rear main seal was starting to go up the viscosity to slow the roll. That's right. We slowed the drip with higher viscosity oil. Went up to a 1030. And that slowed it. It didn't stop it. It slowed it. Because uh, I was losing well over a quart every 6,000 miles. So uh, had to do something to do it. So if I'd have kept the Orange Crush, uh, I would have had to tore into the rear main seal and everything else on it and they had a lot of other issues uh, that really needed maintenance but I traded it in when I wanted more technology so I got the 2011 but uh, the engine here on Lou has not one leaky seal nothing I crawl under there often enough I know what it's doing there's nothing leaking under there uh, so the the 1.5 gen TIVCT uh, 3.5 Duratec, aka Cyclone, uh, is enhanced. Okay, it is. Uh, 
is a little bit on a better side than the first gens and uh, is holding up for me quite a bit better uh, compared to the, the 2008 Edge that I had. Let's see, what else we got? Let's see, some say, uh, let's see, Kevin says diesel motors still require an additive. Well, we don't have diesel edges, so okay. Uh, but that's for the injection system. So, uh, not neither here nor there. Good information to have, but again, we're talking about the Duratec. And no, Andrew, I am not on the run. There's nobody with black SUVs out in the... Wait a second, I gotta go. <laughs> there is a black SUV outside, but I, they, I don't think I have to worry. Uh, but let's see. Steven says he's going to use Redline and the Boss Filter for his next oil change, and he'll be doubling his oil change interval. Uh, no doubt, Steven. I think you're changing like every thousand miles, so you know, two thousand is probably not a stretch. <laughs> uh, Andrew says oil from teenage faces naturally and occurring and free. Yes, yes, we all been down that teenage road. Uh, in our lives. Let's see. Joe asked me, what is the best synthetic oil? Well, the red line is the best, Joe. Uh, and in all the testing, you go to the Mac T garage, look at oil testing results, and you will see the red line is the top oil. Uh, I ran red line. Matter of fact, a lot of my oil changes, uh, you know, I, I do add a dash or two of uh, the red line to top things off. Uh, but I've been doing a lot of uh, oil changes that require a little bit of addition because each oil that I dump in has an ounce or two taken out of it for uh, testing. So I have to make up the oil. And since I have a gallon jug of red line hanging out, I just add, the, add a little bit to top everything off with the red line. So every uh, oil test of the oil cocktail I do has, uh, has a flavoring of red line in it. Uh, enough to affect the oil results because it's got a lot of good stuff in it but uh, the red line as a whole by itself you'll see my oil changing interval there on my last uh, test has that included in there and you can tell just by looking at the oil test that it w w the the one before that or so was uh, the red line oil uh, you can tell through the testing which one's the red line I don't think it's marked but because uh, they just go by hours and didn't have that but there's other tests out there that do show the red line um, carrot juice no carrot juice ain't gonna do it uh, maybe we could get some that Canadian canola oil uh, I don't know if you guys ever look up what canola oil is it's, from, it's 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 from some sort of seed I forget they press it and everything but it's up in Canada and thus the people that invented the oil uh, are Canadian so they call it Canadian oil canola yes that's why it's called canola folks because it's Canadian oil for cooking yeah so uh, history lesson for the day <laughs> apparently it's pretty good for you yeah ain't gonna kill you some some past things said you know some chemicals or something in it but pretty much a, a scare tactic I guess let's see Let's see, what do we got here? Virgin test, use test, all that stuff is in the Mac T garage, as I said. And Stevens asked me if I got some specs sent to, you know, oh, if I, he, if I got the specs he sent to me. So I'm back too far here in this, this whole thing, seeing who's saying what. Uh, olive oil. Uh, olive oil. Uh, great on salads yes not so good on the edge <laughs> don't recommend it although if I did have an old edge engine uh, that was going to the trash compactor uh, it'd be interesting to fill her up with olive oil and just watch her blow up I guess she'd probably stay running you know who knows but uh, so no that is not true Andrew the granola is not from Grenada. 
Okay, so we're, we're, we're diving off the deep end here for a few things. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, getting back on things uh, as far as they go, too, uh, just so we know where we're at on, on doing things. Um, you know, no additives, folks. It's not happening. There's no additives I put. And I strongly recommend not using additives. Um, in your in your Duratec or your EcoBoost or your or anything like that. Okay, it's 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 hogwash. I I don't know what else to tell you. Um, I when I was young, impressionable, I was a slick fifty, 50 fanatic, and I was dumping slick slick fifty and everything. And that turns out not to be a you know. Yeah, that fell down. That went away too. Uh, you know, everybody has their additive they're trying to sell you. Is all I'm trying to say. And none of them are any good for your engine. Changing oil is the best solution. So, uh, you know, never done it. I don't plan on doing it. And the day I have to start dumping additives is the day I know my engine is going. Think about it. If you're dumping additives in your engine because you got a problem, you got a problem. And the problem is you pro either it's worn out or you didn't maintain it right in the first place. Uh, so it's going. Something's failing. And, and no amount of engine oil additive is going to fix a physical problem. It's not going to. It's not going to fix it. So uh, you have one of two choices. Drive it till she drops or drive it and get a new engine put in it. That's really where you're at uh, once you get there. So, uh, you know. Now, Todd Anders asks, do I recommend synthetic? Okay. Um, I recommend synthetic. That's all I run. I don't run the blends. I don't know if you guys know uh, about blends, but here's the honest truth that I've been reading and researching on, and... Blended oils can contain anywhere from 5 to 25% synthetic oil, okay? Uh, I did not see any of them saying they're 50-50. Now, you all read blend on the bottle. What you don't read is the fine print saying what percentage is synthetic and what percentage is conventional oil. Motocraft, not 50-50 blend. Guarantee it. Um most of your blended oils will only add a dollop of actual synthetic oil to the blend so you could be buying a 5% 95% blend in other words 5% synthetic and 95% conventional oil and you're paying a slightly elevated price for it and you're getting nothing out of it run synthetic one synthetic is gonna run better it's going to help cool your engine better, and it's not going to coke your engine up. Coke, if you want to know what that is, go into the group and look at some of the engines and look at them when they change the water pumps. You see all that brownish discoloration all over the engine parts? That is coke. Yes, it is getting coked up. In other words, it's sludging up and it's starting to gum things up. If you run a full synthetic, you have less chances of that happening, and the engine ports and everything for oiling will stay cleaner. I recently took a picture of the inside of the metal on mine, and you saw metal. You did not see a yellowish coloring to it. And that is 230-some thousand miles of running synthetic oil. Now, the first 95, I don't know what they ran in it. I have no clue. I'm going to assume they ran a synthetic blend in it. They, the owners had it. They probably got cheap and went with a conventional oil as far as I know. It was a rental car. They probably just threw the motorcraft in and called it a day. Um, so that all by itself tells you that you can take an engine with 100,000 miles on it used, throw in synthetic for the rest of its life, and it will clean the engine. And that's what's happened with uh, Lou. That's all I ran in it is synthetic oils. Plain and simple. Uh, some people tell me, well, gosh, I've been, you know, I had a conversation with a gentleman on the group. Okay, talked to him, and he was concerned. Hey, I've been running like 
conventional or synthetic or, or blended oil, uh, you know, what will happen to my engine if I go to synthetic? And I'm going to tell you, absolutely nothing. Nothing. The engine won't care. And uh, here's the thing. If you do add synthetic and you start getting a leak, uh, and then you blame the synthetic, don't blame the synthetic. Blame the previous oil because it was clogging the darn gaskets up and keeping it from leaking. But it was also clogging up the rest of your engine in the process. So when you started running in there, all the synthetic is doing is trying to clean your engine for you. So no problem, no no harm will come to your engine if you got a hundred thousand miles on it, which is what it had when I bought Lou, it was nearly a hundred thousand miles on it when I got it. God knows what I had in there. I took it and I started dumping conventional or synthetic oil in it. Not a problem. Okay, uh, so that's the results I get. Same thing when I had the Orange Crush. Synthetic oil. What was run into it for the previous 70,000 miles? No idea. Dump synthetic in it? Didn't have a problem. The only problem I had was when it got old and worn out. And that's to happen. And I still ran synthetic in it, even with the main seal leaking. So uh, the main seal is, you know, the first generations, I, I'm going to just say, it just got worn out. That's all it is. That seal can only be cranked around so many times before it starts giving up the ghost. Let's see. Steven, rental cars are the worst to buy because they are beat to four-letter word and they do the bare minimum to keep it running. Okay. Steven, here's, here's back at you, buddy. The Orange Crush was a rental car. Got it at 60-some thousand miles. Went to 285,000 miles. Rental car. Lou, rental car, sitting at 234,000 miles now. So, no, not an issue with rental cars. They run. They don't have them long enough to do anything to them, and the oil changes and everything else. Usually rental cars, if they get 30,000 miles on them, they're an old rental car. Uh, so... Uh, the, the turnover rate's just too great on them, so they don't hang on to them long. But I'm going to tell you, both of my cars that are featured in the videos are, are uh, rental cars. The only privately owned one is Blueberry, and that is the one my wife drives. And it had one previous owner when we bought it. That was the original purchaser. So uh, there you go. That's it. Rental cars, myth dispelled. High mileage vehicles, both of them. So uh, don't think that a rental car is a bad deal, folks. Okay, uh, it's just not, you know, not in my my opinion anyway. And I've had good luck with them. Um, let's see what else we got. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen, <laughs> three of the wolves on that one, didn't I? Anyway, let's see, Todd. You know, take care of that oh uh, eight, and it's gonna. You know, you got another hundred thousand left in her. If you take care of it, okay, change that coolant, change the oil and, uh, you know, transmission fluid, change the fluids, you, you know, do it often. And if you think it's too long, you, if you think it's too short, change it anyway, because you probably waited longer than I would have anyway, because nothing goes past 30,000 miles in fluids on mine as far as transmission. Okay, so uh, that's just another another part of the whole situation. I change every fluid all the time, and sometimes twice a year. Uh, you guys, how many of you change your transmission fluid twice a year? Uh, well, you got to drive like I do, then you would change it twice a year. Again, two hundred or you know, two hundred thirty-four thousand mile transmission and not skipping a beat. Okay, that thing runs great, and uh, don't have a problem there. Let's see, what else do we got going on here? Who's asking anything? <laughs> Kevin's giving and Steven a royal chewing out. Let's see. Uh, Steven, uh, your, your car with 43,500 miles is not even broken in yet. Uh, I, I don't know what to tell you on that, buddy. Uh, <laughs> 
I have not owned an Edge that had 43,500 miles on it. All of mine had, I think the lowest mileage was the Orange Crest at 69,000, 67,000, I think, when I got it. Uh, Lou had uh, 87,000 miles on it when I bought it. And the uh, Blueberry had 76,000 miles on it. So uh, all of them used, all of them for under $22,000 each. Uh, the o OC, I think, was um, the cheapest one. I think I paid 18 for it, but it was an SE. So, uh, and they were all fairly new within three years or so. Uh, I think, well, no, yeah. Yeah, three years. The oldest one was three years on the road. So, uh, you know, buy them about three years out, get a good deal on them, and you can run them. Run them. Run them and run them. Uh, next one, next car. Gosh, I don't know. I'd love to have a sport, but you know, we gotta gotta see where that goes, uh, and then I probably won't get to drive it anyway. So we'll see what happens. But uh, if I do get a sport, I'm gonna clean out my garage. Be she'll be a garage queen, and I'll start taking parts off and putting new parts on it. <laughs> be my project car. Uh, make Blueberry run forever. I'll, I'll make my wife drive that. I'll throw a new engine in if I have to. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, and Kevin wants to sell me a sport when he gets a few more miles. I can do 200 a month for like 10 years. <laughs> hey, it sounds like a good deal. I uh, don't know that, uh, you know, how the future will be on that one. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, uh, definitely food for thought on that one. Um, but that one's race car. Yeah, race car. And everybody likes race car, right? <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, other things, uh, we got uh, in September, uh, go to the event tabs in the Facebook group and check out the event for September. We're having the Mac T group meet, and last time I checked, we had about 12 people saying they're going, with another 14 giving us the ah uh, uh, uh thing. Um, you know, the more the merrier. Uh, I plan on having you know some things set out, display some parts and everything else, and things that I do. Uh, wash our cars up pretty. Uh, you know, I want to do uh, spotlight videos on all your cars and get some stuff going there and get the event broadcasted and, and we can have some great Italian food while we're at it. Uh, later on when the restaurant opens, we meet in the parking lot and have a great time. Uh, the other four that showed up last time, you know, they had a good time. Good food, good talk, and we all got to reminisce about the best things about our edges and Lincoln MKX was there. So Victor is there and the Howells are there. Had a great time. It was a great meeting. I look forward to seeing all of you there too that can make it. And uh, the more the merrier. Let's make this something that's really good. So this will be the second annual meeting. Yes, second. So if we get enough people then uh, you know that are showing up I have to of course make sure you all verify you're coming then I'll go ahead and reserve the back room to the place because uh, quite frankly I you know we will we'll need it you know if we get a big enough group and they got a nice little room back there so they can fit us all into one room and then we can have a great time while we're there and the parking lot is big enough for a group that you know of that size so we can all park around and and have a great time so by all means check out the event calendar there for September for the Mac T uh, Facebook group live uh, meeting and everything else maybe other groups that get together during that time we can do a little bit of a live feed or something like that so that would be so cool wouldn't it uh, so we got a lot of plans going on and a lot of things that uh, are going to happen let's see Steven you know, Steven says he, he wants to go. Uh, I highly recommend all of us call the airline and let them know that uh, Steven is uh, smuggling contraband and that he deserves a full search. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. A complete search. <laughs> Put him on the no-fly list or something. <laughs> Let's see. 
Let's see. What else we got here? Steven's on here yet. Chad, not. Anybody got any questions? Post those questions on here. There's seven of you, I see, so ask away. Uh, that's part of the deal here. If you got questions, uh, it doesn't have to be entirely edge related. If you want to try it, I'll try to answer uh, questions about uh, if you got questions about me or anything else. Uh, I'll try to answer them best I can without full disclosure of my life. But, uh, you know, I can an answer questions, too, on a lot of other things uh, that, you know, you may be interested in. I don't know. But uh, whatever you guys want to ask, I'll try to answer. This is your opportunity to do it. No, Stephen, you can't answer. Ask any questions. <laughs> Kevin says, do I plan on still driving when I get to 60? Well, Kevin, are you sure that I'm not already 60? No, <laughs> I'm not 60 yet. Uh, I will be doing my job well into my 60s, probably. Um, the thing is, you know, you got to work and make a living and pay the bills. And I got two girls that still haven't even, they have one that's in grade school. He ain't even in middle school yet. So, uh, yeah, you know, late in life, late end. So, yeah, uh, no rest for the weary there. Uh, so, yes, I'll be driving. Uh, although, I will tell you all that uh, I got high hopes that I am getting some help in my job. Uh, I'm sort of excited about that because that will help take a little bit of load off of me uh, when needs because I have had to recently cancel some uh, visits just because there wasn't enough of me to go around. So uh, that would definitely be helpful. Let's see, who's going to be my friend? Let's see, you mean 160 next week. Okay. I asked about the problem with Bandit and you ignored me. Uh, why are you typing in all caps, Steven? Come on. Slow the roll. Yeah, slow the roll. Holy cow. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Stephen. Stephen wants to know why he's... <laughs> Somebody asked him why he's watching an old man on YouTube or Facebook. Why he's at work? I don't know, Stephen. Why are you watching me at work? Shouldn't you be selling cars or something? Holy cow. That's what I think you should be doing, selling cars. Uh, you'll have to buy a bunch of t-shirts, Stephen, so you can give them away when you sell a Ford Edge. Put, give them a Mac T uh, t-shirt to go with it. That would be something you should do, yes. So order plenty of t-shirts, and we can give them away as a sales gift. Instead of a bow tie on the hood, you can give them a t-shirt. <laughs> Tell me, what do you guys think of the t-shirts? Yeah, the new ones. Well, I'm, I'm working on uh, getting uh, all three generations put on the shirt and uh, going that route, working on some more photographs or graphics and things like that. So uh, I, you know, can't, you know, can't promote it enough. Buy the t-shirts. We sold more t-shirts this week than we have uh, the entire time I've been trying to sell the t-shirts. So uh, that has to be something good about the t-shirts you guys like there. Uh, with that being said, uh, you know, buy them. Oh, you know, if I get a get about fifty sold, then I can reinvest that money in that and make better T-shirts uh, with more Ford edges on them and things like that. Let's see. What, well, Stephen? Is there a question? Bandit today has his moment again today. He cranked but does not fire. He stopped the crank and tried to start it again. And it starts right up like normal. What is the deal? Well, Stephen, I'm going to say it's your EVAP purge valve, most likely. Uh, that seems to be uh, symptoms of that, so you might want to have that checked. Uh, that's what I'm going to say it is, but go ahead and check the vacuum on it. And if the vacuum isn't about 21 uh, inch water, then... Uh, you know, if it's down to 14 or, or lower, then it's time to replace it. That'll probably stop your uh, uh, start issues. 
uh, when you go to crank it because you probably either got too much fuel or not enough and not enough air or not enough or not enough fuel and too much air. Either way, you're going to have a rich lean situation with that. Let's see. Elaine says, "Great idea, but I'm not selling my pretty girl." Well, don't don't sell it. Fix it. Drive it. Maintain it, and it'll give you a lot of good years. Uh, I'm going to tell you that the number of miles I've had on my edges, they hold up pretty good, even though we had a salty environment. I have no bubbling up or surface rust that is bubbling in the fenders or anything like that. My hatch is a little rusty, but I'm happy to pass on to you all that the rusty hatch has stopped rusting. Yes, I did a video on that. You guys remember that when I put fluid film on the hatch? Well, no more uh, progressive rust. It is not rusting anymore. It is staying perfectly the way it was. So I have stopped the rust. Now I do have to reapply it here. Uh, I, haven't, I reapplied it one time during the winter uh, just to you know get it you know a little thicker on there. But uh, overall, it's been holding up through the car washes pretty good and everything else so that stuff is working I'm gonna tell you that fluid film is keeping it from rusting so I'm gonna see if maybe I can't do my own DIY uh, fluid film uh, anti-rust thing on the undercarriage there a bit and uh, sort of grease her up so to speak and uh, see if I can't slow the rust down a little bit more by doing that Kevin, I cannot fix Antonio's hood. Antonio needs a new hood. That's the only way you're going to fix that. That thing's rusting from the inside out. Uh, the Ford Edge early models, the front hood rusted, and there's no way to stop it. Uh, once it's bubbled up like that, it's toast. So you either got to go and uh, buy a new hood is my recommendation. You know, there's nothing you can do to help that. Uh, rust is the ultimate evil for uh, for all vehicles. Uh, they only last so long, folks, and uh, then then it's time to get rid of them. Just like Lou, can't run it forever. Eventually, I will be driving another Edge, uh, but you know it'll probably be Blueberry. You know who knows? Uh, just be the same model year, just better Edge. It's got all the bells and whistles, so I'll just drive that. Uh, now you're going to wonder what I'm drinking. Three to four of these a day, folks. 32 ounces. That's a lot to drink. Proper hydration. What can I say? Oh, Steven sold a truck, probably. He's asking me what to guess what he sold. Or either that or one of those little eco thingies with like three-cylinder engine in them or something. Uh, let's see what else is there Steven's pretty much running the table here with, with uh, Kevin chiming in once in a while if he gets a word in edgewise <laughs> who else is here we got a bunch of lurkers so I don't know who's all who's all here watching but we got about seven of you now which ain't too bad um I think I think the highest number I ever had was like maybe 20 at one at any one given time. Uh, but the thing is, most of you watching me, I end up getting like uh, three, four hundred views later on uh, on these live events because you sit down and watch a little bit of it and uh, check it out. So uh, I do know that that does happen uh, later on when you get chance because hey, some of us have to work, right? can't see it or you're busy with family or whatever so that's the beauty about this uh, Facebook live thing is it is available after the fact when I do uh, close it up so you can watch it later and then get a lot of good information out of it and see let's see every pick he sends me is a white truck car snow and a coke he sends a picture of a coke so, I don't know. I don't know what, what you guys are talking about there. <laughs> uh, he sold a silver car. Okay, the silver bullet, I guess. Let's see. Um, 
Steven, I thought you'd been on other lives before. This cannot be the first one you've actually made. Because I know you've been on when I've done it, you know, before. So, uh, I think you've been on there. Oh, boy. What else we got? Well, as far as the group goes, uh, you know, we did some surveys and everything else. And it turns out that the uh, vast majority of you, the group members have managed to find me via the YouTube channel which has gosh how many 340 some videos on it now and you know somewhat humorous sometimes you guys ask questions on how to do something and you gotta search you know type in your search on my uh, YouTube channel and you know type breaks type radiator you know type search words in there to search my videos and look for videos that uh, I have put in there and uh, you should be able to find something uh, that will help you uh, with your repairs on your edge um, and your Lincoln MKX because I got Lincoln MKX repair videos in there spattered throughout too so whatever you do check it out and then watch the videos because I've had a lot of questions well how do I do it well you know I put out a video on how to do it uh, and it covers it in detail you know you might want to fast forward uh, and do that and some of them are long I admit it you know I'm not going to change how I do it if you want to fast forward and miss other details then you know do something wrong that's up to you okay I just gave you the the whole video on how to do it right down to the last turn of the nuts and bolts and everything else and uh, try to give you the best information on how to repair your edge. So uh, they're there. Go to the YouTube. Watch them. Like, subscribe, and uh, bookmark them, share them, whatever you're going to do with them. But uh, find that they're, they're quite helpful uh, to do this. And, uh, you know, and I make them for you guys to, to learn on how to repair your edge and save those, save those pennies here and there. Um, so, yeah, all I can say is the future uh, holds a lot of motor mount issues for me, like I said last week. So, uh, we'll be doing some motor mount videos. So, if y'all want to know how to do your, do your uh, engine trans and torque mounts, those are coming. Rest assured, I'm going to be jumping on that here soon. Let's see. Bill needs to make videos like his brother. No. I know where you're going with this, Steven. Don't even go there. Uh, not going to happen. So, uh, <laughs> I know exactly who you're referencing. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I, I like you folks too much to do that kind of video. Let's put it that way. So, that's where it's, that's where it's not going. Uh, if you want to watch those, by all means, go to his channel and watch them. But uh, I don't see how you learn anything from that. Let's see, what else do we got? Well, looks like we have not much going on. No, not too many questions on what's going uh, on with the group or anything else that I'm doing. So, uh, all I can say is we'll probably shut her down here in a few if we don't have anybody else asking questions and uh, carry on smartly. But, uh, Got a pretty easy day tomorrow is all I can tell you. I got a few meetings and uh, then I can go home for the weekend. And I'm looking forward to that because I've been gone since I think, what is it, Tuesday. Uh, so, yeah, time to head home and uh, enjoy and see what everybody's doing while I've been gone. I, I heard a few of them are sick, so I'm not so sure I want to go home. If they're going to make me sick, I don't want to get sick. So... What are you doing now, Steven? Bleed testing, bleeding brakes. He's posting a bunch of weird stuff up here. I don't know. I'm not going to click the link, Steven. Uh, so maybe uh, maybe y'all can uh, figure out what he's doing. <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, anyway, looks like uh, it's getting close to time to close up shop been on for about an hour now so I do want to remind all of you remember Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook join it like it and of course learn and 
be advised on how to repair your vehicle and then provide information that you've learned in repairing your Ford Edge. And don't forget, this uh, will be also on the SoundCloud and under Mac T. And you can listen to this while you're driving down the road if you want to listen to me on SoundCloud and YouTube channel. Make sure you watch the videos and uh, have a great time there doing that watch the ads click on those help me boost my ad revenue to help uh, make the page even in the group and uh, YouTube channel even better but by all means uh, watch watch them on that and remember the band of one is always playing music on all my videos so make sure you join in on that and help him out he does have stickers for sale that are the band of one logo so get a hold of Kevin on those and he can sell you a sticker and uh, last but not least, uh, you know, MacTGarage.com. Yes, MacTGarage.com. Jump on there. Check the site out. Uh, You'll find it very surprising, the amount of helpful information. Oil change, uh, light bulbs. We, we give you all your duty schedules and everything. There is a lot on there, so surf that and enjoy it. And of course, Mercy Grill will end this all with a couple of one liners. And again, that band of one music is going to be playing. And remember, my fee at the floor today, and I'm having a great day. And I want you to have a great day too. I'm signing off. See y'all later. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Girl production.